In the previous video we looked at position vectors and what we're going to look at in this tutorial is direction vectors. We're going to introduce some new notation and we're also going to look at some of the operations that we can perform on vectors. Now first of all on the screen we have two vectors. We have vector A represented by 6, 2, minus 4 and we have vector B represented by the column vector minus 2, 3, 3. Now what you will notice is that the notation is slightly different here. What we have is A with an accent underneath and another way that we could have written this is as a bold letter A. It's a little harder to represent on the screen here. And the same for vector B. So we can write vectors in a couple of ways. Here we're defining direction vectors. We don't know their start and end point. Had we known their start and end point, we could have represented them as AB or BC as we did in the previous tutorial. All we know here is the direction. And by the direction, so the direction of A, we know that for every 6 we travel in the x direction, we need to travel 2 in the y direction, and minus 4 in the z direction, which using the earlier convention would be out of the page. But what we don't know is we don't know the start and end point. If the start point had been A and the end point had been B, then we could just as easily have written this vector as AB as we did previously. So the first operations that we can perform on these two vectors is we can add them or we could subtract them. So let's say for example we wanted to do vector A plus vector B. And vector A has a direction something like this. And vector B has a direction something like this. So if we want to find A plus B, what we're finding is this vector here that connects our start point to our end point. So the vector A plus B equals our A vector, 6, 2, minus 4, plus our B vector, minus 2, 3, 3. And all we need to do is add the x components together. So we have 6 plus minus 2 gives us 4. 2 plus 3 gives us 5. And minus 4 plus 3 gives us minus 1. So the vector a plus b equals 4, 5, minus 1. We may also want to do a minus b. And a minus b would look something like this. We would have vector a as we did before. Minus b is the same as vector b but in the opposite direction. That would represent the vector minus b because it's in the opposite direction to the vector b. This here then would represent the vector a minus the vector b. Now our same rules apply so we have a minus b equals 6, 2 minus 4 minus this time, minus 2, 3, 3. And all we do is take each of those components independently. So we have 6 minus minus 2, or 6 plus 2, which is 8. We have 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. And we have minus 4 minus 3, which is minus 7. If we were asked to find the magnitude of a minus b, then we can use the method we used previously. All we would do is we would write vector a minus vector b. The vertical lines tell us that we're calculating the magnitude. And that would be the square root of the square of the x, y, and z components from the vector that we've just determined, the 8 minus 1 minus 7. So we'd have 8 squared plus minus 1 squared plus minus 7 squared. And that gives us the square root of 64. Minus 1 times minus 1 is just plus 1. And minus 7 times minus 7 is plus 49. So that gives us the square root of 114. And the square root of 114 is just 10.677. 
So we always have the option of calculating the magnitude. Now another operation we can perform is multiplying a vector by a scalar. Now one of the things that we said at the start of this video was that a vector has a magnitude and a direction. Let's think of something like force, which is a vector. We can apply a force, therefore that force has a magnitude, but it also has a direction. Is it a pushing force? Is it a pulling force? The difference between a vector and a scalar is a scalar only has magnitude, it doesn't have direction. So an example of a scalar would be volume or mass, things that have a physical magnitude or size, but they don't have a particular direction. Another example would be the difference between speed and velocity. Speed has a magnitude, but velocity has a magnitude and a direction. If we define a velocity, we have to specify its magnitude, let's say 30 miles an hour, but we have to say in what direction, from left to right, downwards, and so on. So if we want to multiply a vector by a scalar, we can do the following. And let's perform the following operation. Let's do 3 times vector A minus 2 times vector B. So we can write this out. We have 3 times vector A, 6, 2, minus 4, minus 2 times vector B, minus 2, 3, 3. And what we need to do in this instance is we need to multiply our x, y and z coordinates by the scalar. And here, what I'm referring to as the scalar is the number on the outside. So I would need to do 3 times the 6 first of all. Well, 3 times 6 is 18. Then I would need to do 3 times the 2. Well, 3 times 2 is 6. And finally, I would need to do 3 times the minus 4, which is minus 12. And then I would repeat that for my second vector. So this time I have 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4. I have 2 times 3, which is 6, and 2 times 3, which is 6. And now I can just combine those in exactly the same way as I did previously. So I have 18 minus minus 4, or 18 plus 4, which is 22. I have 6 minus 6, which is just 0. And I have minus 12 minus 6, which is minus 18. If we were asked to find the magnitude of 3a minus 2b, we could also do that. So we have the magnitude of 3a minus 2b. And that would be the square root of our new vector. So the square root of 22 squared plus 0 squared plus minus 18 squared which is the same as the square root of 808, which is 28.425. So in this video, we've looked at some alternative notation for our vectors, and we've also looked at some of the basic operations that we can perform on our vectors.